Kevin Dalton is here, fresh off the campaign trail. Just finished running for LA County Board of Supervisors for District 1, wanting to uh, do a lot of different things in Los Angeles. And we're going to talk about many things, homelessness, uh, how you're not going to be able to buy a gas-powered vehicle, doctors who the state can come after for saying something they don't like. All kinds of fun things are happening in California right now. And Kevin still lives there. Why? We're going to ask him. But you got a lot of views on this video. The campaign ad Gavin Newsom doesn't want you to see. So I thought we could start here, if that's okay, Kevin, and then I'll have you explain. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, here we go. As your governor, I promise you, whatever challenges come our way, I will always lead the California way. You are literally insane. I say that's the California way. You guys are really awesome. Thank you so much. Based on compassion. I mean, if we're going to be realistic, they pay you to be homeless here. Common sense. Clean and sober is one of the biggest damn mistakes this country's ever made. Uh, we all need to self-medicate periodically. Telling the truth. Telling the truth. Treasuring our diversity. Just at this to hit my. Telling the truth. Following science. Protecting our planet. Love like yours will surely come my way. Hey, hey, hey. Gavin Newsom, courage through crisis. As your governor, I okay, promise. so let's start with why. Why did you decide to make this video? Well, I'm I am a uh, anyone but Gavin Newsom. Um, if there was a a rotting rutabaga on the the ballot next to uh, Gavin Newsom's name, I would much prefer the rotting rutabaga uh, run this run the state. You're a never Newsomer. Uh, yeah, yes, I, I have, uh, what is it, uh, Newsom, uh, uh, the, the Trump disorder. Dysfunction, uh, yeah, or uh, the I TDS, have, uh, the Trump something syndrome. NDS, yes. I derangement, have, uh, derangement, New derangement. Newsom derangement syndrome, <laughs> yes, I do, uh, 100%. And, uh, and the guy just deserves it, you know, um, for 20 years now, since he was the the mayor of San Francisco, he's just left a, a wake of disaster behind him and has failed up from that to lieutenant governor to governor. And I don't care what he says, he is definitely eyeing the White House in 2024. And the only thing worse than him running California would be him running the whole entire country. <laughs> he he somehow eked out that recall uh election curious i mean i don't i don't i don't know how things um are there in california when it comes to how how elections are run and it's obviously posting this video on youtube that's the topic they're very sensitive about unless you're talking about 2016 and you're a corporate news outlet in which case you can say whatever you want uh, especially also if you're hillary clinton but but i'm curious you know because it would be easy to think like this guy just he's he's just a uh, a leech who won't leave but if people are voting him back in then don't you guys just get what you deserve uh well i i not no um i i i <laughs> I, I, California. <laughs> I don't like the you vote with you deserve you get what you deserve because so many people did not vote for that um, as much as I dislike Gavin Newsom, he is a, a brilliant sociopath. And the way he got through the recall was basically turning the recall against him and then putting it on to Larry Elder, who's a uh, talk show host here, uh, you know, real smart guy uh, and would have done great to uh, great things for the state. But he painted him as a Trumper. And then instantly it just became... Either, you know, you can recall me, but you're going to get this guy who's essentially Trump. And he took a just he turned the the, the tables on the recall. Um, he did something similar with the the primary election. Uh, Michael Schellenberger, who I think would would have been a fantastic candidate and governor for California um, and in clearly his biggest rival. Um, Gavin Newsom went ahead and picked a Republican um, named Brian Dahl, who said, oh, this guy's this guy's the 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 big bad Republican and completely ignored Michael Schellenberger. But what that did was 
all of the Republicans in the state went, oh, this Brian Dahl guy is going to be our guy because Gavin Newsom doesn't like him. And they jumped on the Brian Dahl uh, bandwagon. And unfortunately, uh, Michael Schellenberger didn't get the, the primary, didn't get the number two spot. So he's he's really good at kind of manipulating and and getting exactly what he wants, as evident by him always seeming to get exactly what he wants. <laughs> okay. Since I, I cover media bias and censorship, what do you think the role of the media is in helping support Gavin Newsom and his tenure? I, I mean, they just fall all over him. There, there are only a handful of journalists and they aren't traditional media journalists who who stand up to him and ask questions and of course those people only get in front of him one time and then they never get asked questions again or you know or get any face time with with Newsom at all uh, anyone who asks tough, tough questions is just on a no fly zone um, and you know and and they do uh, the exact opposite with this guy like Brian Dahl, who is uh, who is running against Newsom, gets zero media coverage. Um, I even tweeted yesterday. I said, "Look, if I weren't so into politics, I wouldn't even know that there's a, a an election for governor this year." All Newsom does is talk about Texas and talk about Florida and their governors hasn't once brought up the election because he knows he doesn't need to. I mean, it's it's basically a foregone conclusion that he'll be reelected in November. If you live in California, you and I both know you need a drink at this point in time. So that's why you should go to AllisonWinePromo.com and get 50% off of some of my favorite Malbecs from Argentina. They're from very remote regions, some from very high altitude vineyards. You get 50% off the wine itself and 50% off shipping. These are wines that I drink myself when I'm not full of a bowling ball baby about to give birth in a couple of weeks. So cheers to the new producer in my honor. Help the college fund. Go to allisonwinepromo.com. Again, if you're already a wine drinker or if you're in California and you're thinking about picking up drinking, go support my work and get to allisonwinepromo.com. But maybe you're moving out of California and you got a long drive ahead of you in the U-Haul. That means you need a stiff cup of coffee, which is why you should go to twininginecoffee.com slash allison and choose from one of many high altitude USDA certified organic roast from Nicaragua. There are light roasts, there's dark roasts, there's a limited black edition, which is very good. There's also a Katura tea. If you're a tea drinker, this is the tea that you brew from the fruit that goes around the coffee bean. It's really good. It tastes a lot like black tea. I've said before, I am making kombucha out of mine, so you don't have to just stop at tea. There are many recipes out there for it. Uh, I like to cold brew mine, but you can hot brew it as well. Add a little bit of lemon juice and some monk fruit sweetener. It's very good. Wherever you live, whatever you're drinking, thank you for supporting my sponsors. They do keep me in business. Let's keep on with the video. Okay, curious, when it comes to Newsom and um, and the media like you're talking about, they they seem to just give him a pass on, on the issues that you brought up in your video. I mean, you have a plethora of opportunity for any journalist, I guess, who wants to investigate some of this stuff to really dig into it. Do you think it's because reporters are aligned with his worldview or because they're scared of him? Or, I mean, it just, it's just a question I don't really have a answer to, but I, I ask people a lot about this because I try to understand my old industry, you know, where I came from. And in my experience, it often was a confirmation bias that aligned these these classes, I guess, of sort of the the elite corporate news and then the elite politician. And they all kind of think kind of the same way, like they just aligned politically and their worldviews are very similar. And so they're not seeing it as running press, uh, you know, good press or propaganda for him. They think they're just telling the truth because he is. That's the way we, that's the way a lot of people see it. But what do you, what's your thought on that? Why, why do you I, think he gets such kid gloves? I, exactly like you said that they they fall in line politically so they they don't believe that they're giving him good press or bad press but it's it's confirmation bias exactly like you said I mean you you can just tell I, I shouldn't be able to 
identify a journalist's political proclivities based on the articles that they write. Um, but by completely ignoring the things that he's doing or not doing, you know, when they talk about homelessness, they just talk about, oh, well, he's he's doing, you know, all these new programs and project room key and home key and, and all of these things to get people off the streets, but they never bring up that they statistically fail that they have for 20 years. Um, they only talk about what he wants to do. And uh, Gavin Newsom, you know, his his uh, number one priority is homelessness. And he's been saying that for every year he's been in office. And it's pretty obvious when you look at the streets, uh, it's it's not the case. The homeless count came out yesterday. And, it, you know, there's it rose, I think, 4% in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County. And that's just the way the numbers go. Um, we have 12% of the nation's population in California. We have 30% of the nation's homeless. Wow. Yeah, it's a, a live, a, a, essentially a live look at the streets of San Francisco. Did you shoot this video? I uh, I did not. No, no. I oh, just this is San Francisco. This is video. not LA. Yes. Okay, Correct. that's good to know. Um, well, no, I just saw this on your Twitter, so I figured I would, I'd show it, but, uh, it doesn't, it, it's, it doesn't look that different from LA. <laughs> no. Oh no. You go down Skid Row and you're going to see exactly the same thing. Yeah. So why, why are his policies, uh, in your opinion, not working and what are his policies exactly? Well, I, as far as, you know, homelessness goes, um, I, I think because, it's easy just to say this is a housing crisis because if you call our homeless epidemic a housing crisis, no one's really to blame. You know, it's it's just there aren't enough houses, and you don't have to put any responsibility on on mental health or drug addiction, which are if, if you're intellectually honest, are the absolute two greatest drivers of of the homeless epidemic. Um, there are certainly a lot of other factors that put people on the streets, and maybe for some, it is a housing issue. But uh, to convince me that the majority of the people on the street were just a couple hundred dollars short on rent and then ended up uh, in, in that depravity uh, is, is just not the case. Um, you know, they, they're turning all of these hotels. If there is an open room, you have to put a homeless person in there. And they don't have to be sober. They don't have to, you know, take any services at all. In fact, when the pandemic first hit, they were delivering booze and weed and cigarettes to the rooms of homeless people. And, you know, I'm like, look, you're just, you're, you're enabling, you're encouraging this behavior. Um, you know, everyone will say, well, it's the weather. That's why people come to California. And it's, it's also because, you know, they get $600 a month, they get food stamps, they get phones, they get all of the, you know, they just get everything catered to them. And it's allowed homelessness to be a lifestyle where, you know, 20 years ago, someone choosing to be homeless, it would have been an insane proposition um, because it wasn't, it wasn't an option. And now it's like, well, I'm just going to go pitch a tent in front of a $4 million home in Venice Beach. And I have everything I possibly want. And of course, people come here. Uh, curious. I, I know somebody who is working on, I don't know where this, this this stands at this point, but there was some kind of uh, petition that maybe they wanted to put on a ballot to tax uh, people when they sell their house over $5 million or something like that, that you'd get more money from the sale of these homes to go towards the homelessness issue. Are you familiar with that? Uh, well, every single, um, every single election, there is another, uh, another proposition to put more money into homelessness. And I like a dummy, I voted yes for it for, I think HHH, uh, a few years ago, the, the money is not the problem in this state. It's not the problem in this County. Um, we've, we've got billions and billions of dollars that go into this while the homeless epidemic grows exponentially. I think right now in LA County, it costs over a million dollars for a single, for one homeless, uh, uh, you know, spot within within a building. So one room for one homeless person now costs over a million dollars. That's that's more expensive than a lot of houses out here. Um, and so you've got all of this money going into. 
uh, places where it shouldn't go to. The people that are boots on the ground doing the most help for homeless are the ones that never see a dime of any of this money. You tweeted here that even at 40%, this is uh, the retweet is the 40% of the unhoused people they surveyed experience mental illness or have substance abuse issues. What is LAHSA again? Uh, that's the the homeless. Uh, oh, sheesh. Uh, it, that, that, that's okay. is, that is that is the biggest homeless uh, uh, homeless pro program in the county. Mm -hmm. So you're saying even at 40 percent, and I believe it's double that, leaving tens of thousands of mentally ill people on the streets to slowly commit suicide is beyond criminal. What what would you prefer seeing? Well, I, I think the the first thing I would do is we've got to end the essential open air drug market that we've got. Um, you know, you can go and just get anything that you want, and the cops are essentially handcuffed to do anything about it. Even if they do, the drug dealers are back out on the street before the cops even finish up the paperwork for the arrest. So there's there's almost no repercussions for using no repercussions for, for, for selling, and that just needs to change. We need to make it really, really difficult to get drugs. And then the drug dealers are, are the greatest uh, businessmen on the planet. Once they realize that it's no longer financially viable to sell here in LA County, they're gonna go somewhere else. And the people that are here just to use, they're gonna go follow the drug dealers then at that point, we can really start to focus on the people that need the help. And I'm sorry, that wants the help. Uh, because right now we've got so many people who are service resistant because they're getting what they what they really want, which isn't a house, which isn't mental health, which isn't which isn't job training. They, they want to get high on the streets.